That's right, baby. It's time for J-Rock to react to more Films, Comics Explained videos. We're going to check out the very first Terminator. Let's go. If you smell, what J-Rock is cooking. Finally, J-Rock has come back to YouTube. Oh, what is happening in, 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 in with the millions <laughs> of J-Rock's fans watching from all over the world. You're here with J-Rock smack dab in the Smackdown Hotel on the corner of Know Your Road Boulevard and Jabroni Drive. And we are here to check out Films, Comics, Explained, one of my favorite channels. And we're going to check out the very first Terminator, the T-800, what it can do on how it paved the way for, in my opinion, the greatest Terminator movie of all time, T-2, Judgment Day. Terminator Dog Fate hit movie, movie theaters in a few weeks, so why don't we go back, way back, back into time. Let's check this out. I don't care what you're doing, come and get me. What? You don't have to wait. You got a serious attitude, bro. Brother, you have no idea. What is happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the T-800 Terminator, which was first featured in James Cameron's heart-thumping sci-fi thriller, The Terminator, starring Linda Hamilton, Michael B, Earl Bowen, Lance Henriksen, and Arnold Schwarzenegger as the nigh-unstoppable cybernetic killing machine. I, Arnold! The T-800 is get out of here! Infiltrated get to the chopper! Skynet to aid in its quest to I... humanity. While the supercomputer had begun its attack with nuclear Armageddon, its follow-up strikes were led by humanoid constructs called Terminators, which had been designed to infiltrate the human resistance. During the early years of the war, Skynet went that was an underrated movie of right there. Era with these infiltration units, Terminator Salvation. The fact that they stuck out like a sore thumb among humans. Real underrated movie right there, man. This led the AI to create the T-800, a cybernetic organism that could mimic human behavior and display human qualities such as breathing, sweating, and bleeding, which enabled the newly constructed Terminators to better fool the humans and led to the destruction of many bases through infiltration. Over time, the resistance was forced to adopt methods to better detect the infiltrators, but even if they were able to spot one, the T-800s were a force to be reckoned with, possessing superior strength, durability, and the ability to learn new ways of destroying its desired targets. While the units which featured living skin were used for infiltration, the remainder of the T-800s were all reduced down to their mechanical skeleton, before being sent in as foot soldiers during major engagements. I think it should also be noted that this was a deliberate move by Skynet, which knew how terrifying the Terminators looked to humans, and we saw glimpses of this shock and awe tactic throughout the series. The T-800 Terminators featured a neural net processor which was contained within the endo skull and protected by inertial shock dampers. Developed by Cyberdyne Systems, this CPU is one of the most powerful microprocessors ever built. As part of its vast internal databases, the T-800 contained numerous files on human anatomy and psychology, which enabled them to become more efficient hunters. This CPU could also be updated with multiple database files related to advanced infiltration techniques, training for soldiers, emergency medical techniques, tactical strategies, and detailed files from other Terminators linked up to Skynet, making each unit a combat veteran directly after stepping off the assembly line. 
The T800 CPU was also capable of learning on its own. However, all units that were sent on solo infiltration missions or through time displacement had their CPUs set to read only, reducing the risk that a unit would become more self-aware and go rogue. In the outstanding sequel, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, we get to see this in practice with both Sarah and John Connor activating the learning ability of the T-800 that had been sent to protect John. And as the film progressed, the Terminator showed curiosity, began to comprehend and imitate human behavior, and with its sacrifice at the end of the film, it showed that it even began to understand the value of human life. Can you learn stuff that you haven't been programmed with? So you can be, you know, more human? The CPU is a drone that processes a learning computer, but Skynet presets the switch to read only when we send out alone. He doesn't want you to do too much thinking. No. No. The metal endoskeleton of the T-800 is a controlled, triple-armored, hyper alloy combat chassis constructed with frictionless bearings in its joints. Its limbs were controlled by axial drive motors and trailing links, which enabled them to maneuver faster than their T-600 counterparts, which were also heavier and weaker than the T-800s. Their endoskeleton was actuated by a powerful network of hydraulic servo mechanisms, giving the Terminator superhuman strength. This in turn enabled them to take on heavy loads without impeding on their speed or functionality. of a high-density titanium steel alloy, this reinforced structure was easily capable of withstanding conventional firearms, making them difficult to destroy. In the films, we see the units withstand 20th century firearms, explosions, and many heavy impacts that damaged their living tissue, but left their endoskeleton relatively unscathed. I should also point out that while firearms were relatively useless against the Terminators, they were actually quite vulnerable to plasma weapons, which were used by both the Resistance and Skynet in the future wars. All right. As they were designed to be the most superior infiltrator units to date, Skynet used replicated human tissue which had been extracted from human prisoners and drew this living skin on the endoskeletons of the T-800 models. This was a major game changer from Skynet which began to blur the lines between man and machine and we see numerous modifications of this approach as the series progressed, like with the creation of Marcus who was a human who had his consciousness grafted onto a cybernetic structure. Flesh and blood, though it seems to heal itself quickly. The heart is human, very powerful. The brain too, but with a chip interface. I've covered this and the overall trajectory of Skynet through the continuity of the films in another video, and we'll leave a link to this below. The living tissue covering the T-800s was similar to that of humans, with the ability to sweat and produce odors. And although their flesh did contain blood, it only displayed a minimal amount of bleeding when damaged. Their skin was also able to heal itself over Boom. time at a much faster rate than humans. However, if too much of their flesh had become damaged, their skin would begin to decompose into a waxy, yes, corpse-like texture. Peace! The machines Mighty. could use radio receptors and infrared optics to hunt down their programmed targets, and they all possessed an advanced vocal processor that allowed them to mimic people's voices to trick their targets into coming out of hiding. You hurry home, we can sit down and have dinner together. I'm making these too. Something's wrong. Dog's name. Max. Paige, no. What's wrong with Wolfie? I can hear him barking. Is he okay? Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. Tricked him. Didn't even the know. Field, the T 800s were generally armed with a standard Skynet issue plasma rifle. Forced In appearance saying that, dead. they were all programmed with the ability to use any weapon to achieve their goal, as was seen with all the T 800 models that were sent back in time and showed a detailed understanding of not only all human weapon types, but also human anatomy and psychology, as mentioned earlier. Infiltrator units were each powered by two hydrogen cells, which enabled them to function for well over a century. With that in mind, I don't think Skynet had intended for its units to last longer than a few decades, as over time, the chances of one becoming self-aware and going rogue increased significantly. Because hydrogen fuel is so volatile, these power cells became unstable when ruptured and would explode with the force of a large bomb. Yeah. 
take the wheel. What are you doing? I powered the two hydrogen fuel cells. My primary cell was damaged by a plasma attack. This body chassis is heavily armored and hardened to withstand external attack. You'll find a way to destroy it. Unlikely. I'm an obsolete design. Using their advanced HUD, the infiltrator units were capable of running system checks and calculating the distance of objects relative to themselves, which made the detailed kinetic studies of trajectory, sampling, and analysis possible within a split second. This was also very useful in assessing human emotional states and body language, and the T-800s would rarely perform a function or move without checking this display to ensure that they determined the best course of action. I recently rewatched the first Terminator film, and have to admit, 34 years later, it is still one of the most terrifying portrayals of Cat and Mouse brought to screen, with a seemingly unstoppable machine the desire to kill Sarah Connor. I mean, the first Terminator was emotionless, cold, violent, ruthless, and had no emotional range or connectivity to its words or actions, and almost never showed a facial expression beyond its cold, flat face, speaking only when it meant to engage others for information, or when it intended to throw unwanted attention off of itself. Like the rest of the Terminators we'd see throughout the series, the T-800 in the first film was single-minded and relentless in its mission to destroy the Connors, to the point that it continued to pursue Sarah, even when it was significantly damaged. That's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a closer look at the T-800s featured in the Terminator franchise. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. This, that was a scary moment for me right there. Yeah, when he walking down that hallway limping, like, oh, I ain't done. I'm still coming for you. And this doggone machine would not stop. And I know it was more of an action thriller sort of movie when it first came out, but man, it, it has some scary parts in there. And like that one I just talked about. Um, yeah, so to me, so far, Terminator, the first one is the second greatest Terminator movie of all time. All time. Uh, Terminator Salvation, very underrated movie. I think it was the fourth one after uh, Rise of the Machines, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Genesis was I. Right. You know, I wasn't. Oh my God, knocked back on my seat when I, you know, with Genesis. It was all right. But, um, so, yeah. Um, I'm interested in seeing the new one, Terminator Dark Fate. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something you're going to check out, what you thought about them. And also let J-Rock know of the Terminator franchise. Which one was your favorite movie so far? Mine was T2, Judgment Day, um, followed by this one, the first one. Uh, I'll probably say Terminator Salvation is the third, followed by uh, Rise of the Machines with Genesis, Genesis being last. Uh, I'm not saying Genesis was, I'm not saying it sucked, but it wasn't as good as all the rest of them. I'll just put it to you like that. But anyway, post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know what you thought of this video. If you appreciated J-Rock's reaction, make sure that you hit that like button and you subscribe. Help J-Rock get to 1 million subscribers. He needs your help. He cannot do it without you so share this with everyone you know and let them know that J Rock is here. Also, make sure you hit that bell so that you can be notified that it is time to be electrified. Until next time. If you smile, what J Rock 
Yeah.